Yay Networks. Welcome back to Jojo Mayhem. Welcome back. Anna, how are you feeling? I'm feeling better. I I still have a little tickle in my throat. You're on the mend. I'm on the mend. I'm way better than I have been. You're so. over the hill. Yes. You're there's light at the end of the tunnel. There is, finally. You are almost out of the woods. Uh-huh. How many more? I don't know. Phrases can I say? How are you feeling, Shane? I am unhappy. Oh, okay. I have a few qualms. Uh-huh. That I would like to discuss to open today's episode. Today's episode is going to be about romance and flirting. Mm -hmm. We have some little romantic stories that are actually just really cringy stories. <laughs> and then we're going to talk about flirting and how we flirt and what we can learn to be better flirters oh. within our relationship, not with other people. Yeah, Shane found another article, everyone, so we're going to talk about that. CNBC has been <laughs> killing it with the questionable... Uh, Relationship on their website, yeah. yeah. The relationship advice from CNBC. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we're gonna talk all about that, but first, I'm angry. Okay, so this, this has nothing to do with the rest of the episode. Uh -huh. Shane needs to get some things off of his chest, so here we go. What's your first qualm, Shane? And are you familiar with Chat GPT? I am familiar with it. What is it for those of you who? Maybe haven't been on the internet in the last year. Okay. Well, I've never used it personally. I know it through you. You're a fan of ChatGPT. I you am. You know, for, for comedic purposes, typically. Yes. Uh, ChatGPT is a website, I assume. It's like an a AI, yeah. Yeah, but like you go to their website. Right. You type in a, a command, kind of. Like, write me a letter to Santa right. from a little kid in Ohio who wants a blue truck. Okay. And then it will write... A really, really good letter to Santa full of details that you didn't say uh, and, and produce that for you. Right. And I think, I mean, seriously, if you have been on the internet at all recently, you cannot have missed the explosion of news and information about AI-driven technology. Uh, ChatGPT is a text-based AI system. Um, it's extremely advanced and can do just about anything that you ask it to with pretty amazing levels of detail. I have a problem <laughs> with it. I, as Hannah said, I do use it here and there, um, you know, as thought starting uh, exercises. It's great when I'm like, hey, give me five ideas uh, for a video about going to the mall and it'll spit out five ideas, and then we can riff on that from there. Mm -hmm. However, I am noticing a growing number of aspiring writers who are choosing to use chat GPT as a complete replacement for their own writing without acknowledging it or telling their readers mm -hmm. or followers that they are doing so. Mm -hmm. There are a few individuals in particular <laughs> who I will not name because I'm taking the high road <laughs> who I have followed for quite some time. They are aspiring writers. Some are in the disability space. Some are not. And these are people who have reached out to you. That's how you know they're aspiring writers. You know, some of these people you've like actually spoken to, given advice to. Yes. You've read their writing. Yes. And like Shane said, we have followed them for a while. Right. So we, I know. So there's a very d big difference. In uh, yeah, the I, I yeah. I know. I've learned their voice and their tone and their abilities. Their in grammar. Writing, their yeah, all of that. Grammar. And it is such a stark difference when they suddenly begin using chat GPT. First of all, the writing that chat GPT spits out is a Tim to like a fifth grader's essay on like how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> like chat GPT has a very specific tone. It's like you can almost immediately pick out something that it has written. It's because robotic it's, and stiff. Yeah, and, and it's just formula a, it's a little bit strange you know like the things that it says you're like okay and once you've read five of the things that it's written you're like okay this is how it writes i was just literally like 
today I will be telling you a yeah. story about a boy that lives in, you know? Yeah. And next I will explain. It's just, it doesn't feel like a human quite yet. And I, I mean, it is very impressive, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But you can tell it's not a human, especially when you're holding it up against a human who's writing, you kind of know pretty well and understand. Now, like if like if uh, Shane wrote an Instagram post, you should do this and see if people notice that is chat GPT versus what he normally does. Like yeah. it would people would be like, what in the world is this? You know, it's very, very clear. So I've seen a few people, as I mentioned, who have switched from using any of their own original writing to now posting almost daily because it's easy as hell <laughs> yeah. to do, these long posts that are clearly written by AI. I don't know if they're using chat GPT to be specific, but they're not writing it because yeah. that is not how they write. And I think without acknowledging that to your followers and readers, you are a fraud. And yeah, I mean, lying to people. <laughs> and when there's comments that are like, like, this is amazing insight, great, great, you know, job. And they're just like, thank you so much. I was like, uh, <laughs> you definitely didn't write that. Exactly. And like, I know, like, it would be silly to say that AI should have no place in writing or anywhere. Like, we, our world is moving in that direction. And sadly, whether you like it or not, we're going to have to get used to it. But, acknowledge that you used it. Say yeah. that, you know, you use chat GPT to help outline this piece that you're about to read, but all the, you know, thoughts are original, whatever. Yeah. Or if you and if none of the thoughts <laughs> are original, say that as well. <laughs> uh it really frustrates me because it discounts the work that I have cultivated throughout my life to be a writer, like and other writers, and know? other writers, yeah, but like all the people that aren't. It's like I'm pissed. It's <laughs> devaluing what I do. Yeah, but oh. like it will, it will never get to that to the level of the writing that you do. I but like not. we said, it's <laughs> very clear to like that you, what you're reading is Chat GPT, and it's very clear that what you write is not. So you know, I I also just think it's silly. It's like you're not you know using your skills. You're they're not going to improve as writers. Yeah, just exactly. Putting out the same thing again and again. It's like an aspiring baker who <laughs> decides that suddenly they are not going to be baking, but they will be purchasing yeah. cookies from a grocery store. Yeah. And that will be their craft. And it's like, on. okay. Like, that's well, that's different. Different. That's <laughs> not baking, but okay. <laughs> oh, it's baking by proxy. Yeah, exactly. So that is one of my qualms. It's just selling baked goods. It's the same thing, Shane. That was a great analogy. Not well, chat GPT helped me think of it. I, <laughs> I do want to say one thing, though. Yeah. Uh, one fraudulent activity that you took part in. Oh, uh, I recently, a couple days ago, received a very long poem from Shane in text. I was in another room and the poem was asking for me to help him go pee. And I, you know, I skimmed it. I didn't, it was very long. I skimmed it and I was like, oh, this is really funny. Like Shane took all this time to write this poem. Did you don't read my poetry? You skim my poetry? It was very long. It was like 16 <laughs> stanzas it or whatever. It was valid. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, wow, Shane, you put so much energy into writing that poem. Of course, I'll help you go to the bathroom right now. <laughs> As if sometimes you're like, yeah. <laughs> you know what? You didn't ask me you know, yeah. with enough energy. You didn't ask me enough nicely. <laughs> but I was like, oh, wow, that was so cute. And then I go in there and I was like, that poem, Shane, like, good job. And he was like, you thought I wrote it? That was Chad GPT. And I was like, I feel swindled that I, for a second, thought that you had written me that poem. And that's fair. I get that, like, you know, for yeah. a split second, you were like, oh. Yeah. But did you imagine if you would come in the room and said, Shane, that poem was so funny to you. And I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> And didn't tell me and that didn't you tell you. <laughs> that is so messed up. It and is. that is what these people are doing now <laughs> on social media. It's weird. Yeah, it is weird. Just practice your own writing. And, yeah. You know, use chat GPT sparingly to enhance so now, what yeah. you're doing. I'd like a poem. Replace. I'd like a poem from you. Original writing only. Well, I about going my, to the I'm back. gonna need the internet. <laughs> I'm going to need a, a little website. <laughs> <laughs> so that is one of my qualms. Oh, boy. That took forever. What is? Let's go quickly through your next qualm. Qualm number two is that while we were in L.A., 
unfortunately, the restaurant industry <laughs> here in Minneapolis has gone to shit. Oh, my god! Almost gosh. entirely collapsed. Well, that's not <sighs> true at all. Uh, I'll let you even... explain it because I know you're upset about well, yeah, both of them. This is also my qualm. Um, it's not qualm a fun word. It's a great word. I asked you, chat GPT for Shane. a better word <laughs> than problem. Stop it. We come back from LA and yesterday I drive by our favorite restaurant. Yeah, probably top three. Top three. Mm-hmm. It's It holds a very special place in our hearts. We got it after our wedding as our takeout food dinner like during our COVID wedding when it, it was just us. It's a Rezzo Italian. Yeah, a Rezzo restaurant. Yes, a, re- a Rezzo restaurant. Anyway, we love a Rezzo. I've gone there a million times. Amazing Italian food. Yeah. Quiet environment. Lovely people. Oh, wonderful staff. Yeah. So we're we're home, drive by, gone. Every every trace of this restaurant vanished. Disappeared. Just gone. Yeah. We were absolutely flabbergasted. They have been there for 22 years. 22 years. Yeah. We've been eating there religiously for five. For five. Yeah. We know from like the ambiance of the place that other people there are enjoying it as well. <laughs> yeah. People aren't like puking in their seats, <laughs> uh, storming out angrily. So I did a little digging and found an article by a business journal here in Minneapolis that stated that the reason they are no longer in business is because the landlord that owns the building, I'm yelling, I'm sorry, (laughs) the landlord that owns the building just didn't renew their lease, wanted a different tenant. I have no idea why. I don't know if there was like interpersonal issues. I don't know. Or what, if they didn't want to pay that They wanted to like raise the rent, yeah. But they just, (laughs) they killed baby (laughs) Arezzo. And now like with no warning to us, (laughs) <laughs> like we deserve an email. Well, I, if you're gonna do that to us, was there a sign? Was there like a, a goodbye bash? Because we were in LA, we might have missed it. We missed the goodbye. We missed but the But I looked funeral. at their website. I looked at Arezzo's website, and it, there's nothing on there. No, I had to look on like dot, like Minneapolis dot biz to find it. <laughs> so we were we were horrified. Okay, this is this is afternoon. We're horrified. I'm driving alone. I text Shane. I'm like, our restaurant is gone. We're freaking out. I was like, baby, don't worry. Like, that sucks. But <laughs> why don't you and I, and maybe we can invite your parents, uh-huh. go to our other favorite restaurant yeah. for dinner. We'll head to our favorite diner. Yeah. And we'll have a nice meal there. And we'll just kind of honor a rezzo in that way. Yeah. So we head to dinner. Like Shane said, this is one of our favorite places to go, especially with my parents, because it's a diner that has everything. It is a gigantic menu. It has anything that you could want to eat. So when there's multiple people there, if someone wants pancakes and someone wants, you know, fish and chips and someone wants a right. salad or it, it's it's endless meatloaf, whatever, uh-huh. whatever and, you want. And it's, I know some of you heard that and went, oh, that makes all the food bad. No. But it's a hundred places where like the kitchen is pretty open. You no, I can feel that they're making the food there. Well, and the food's amazing. And the like, food's so good. The food is <laughs> so good. My favorite thing to get there is uh, their shrimp dinner. Yes. And my favorite is the tilapia dinner. Yeah, the tilapia dinner. A diner that does seafood well in Minneapolis. I know. It's like one of the best shrimp, breaded fried shrimp, you know, and, and French fried dinners that I have ever gotten. And that's one of my favorite <laughs> things to eat. So it's, it's really special. Right. So we go to our favorite diner. Or we are not naming on purpose. Yeah. And we sit down, we're handed a menu. We are handed a menu, we open the menu, and we all kind of laugh <laughs> because there's like two or three items on the menu. <laughs> uh none of which are any of our favorite items. Mm-hmm. So we're like looking at all four of our menus. Yeah. Seeing if like I got a faulty one <laughs> or something. No. New menu. It's a new menu. And they've just decided <laughs> to cut their dishes in like a fourth like everything. of what it used to be. Yeah. You know what's gone? Shrimp dinner. <laughs> you know what else is gone? Tilapia dinner. <laughs> meatloaf is meat gone. Meatloaf. <laughs> a diner that doesn't do meatloaf. Oh, you know what else is gone? Potato skin appetizer. My other favorite item. Like <laughs> Your what? Your favorite items are. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can get them anywhere. I'm we a toddler. Get- <laughs> but like, oh, are you serious? Uh, <sighs> So we inquire with the waitress, kindly, 
you know, we're not the height <laughs> of people that are really like, what's wrong with the menu? But we were like, hey, the uh, menu's different. What's up? Apparently, they're under new ownership. Yeah. And the new owners apparently don't like meatloaf or <laughs> shrimp dinner or tilapia <laughs> dinner. <laughs> or potato skins. But you know what? They now have gyros or gyros. Euro. Or really, Euro. But a food that no one wants. <laughs> People uh, want it, but it's lamb, and I don't eat lamb. So, like, what am I supposed to eat? And I can't chew any of it. Yeah. So, bring back the meatloaf. That's my qualm. <laughs> I'm getting more annoyed the more I talk about it. Wow. Uh, those are our qualms. Just, just those ones. That only took about half an hour to yeah. get through all of our qualms. Maybe the end of the episode. No. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to be right back with two stories of some early romance in mm-hmm. our relationship. Shane, ever since I was 10 years old, my hair has been frizzy. You do have some frizzy hair. No, you're not supposed to say that. You're supposed to say, no, 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 you don't have frizzy hair. You don't have frizzy hair. I do have frizzy hair. Your hair is so smooth. Now, everyone's hair is different. So using, you know, one size fits all grocery store shampoo and hair care products doesn't always work. I have long been searching for a company and a product that would help my frizzy hair situation. You need it. My dry hair situation, my split end situation, all of these issues that I have and have had for a while. <laughs> Nothing did Rage's hair more than her split end. <laughs> well, I'm happy to report, Shane, that since switching to made to order hair care with pros, I have never been happier with my hair. And I can tell because your hair is looking vibrant and thick and mm-hmm. strong. Yes. I haven't heard you whine or scream about okay. split ends okay. and weeps. I got some compliments in the past couple of weeks about my hair that I have not gotten in a while. That's so nice. Pros makes custom hair care that's effective because the formulas are actually made to order for your unique needs. So you fill out a quiz. I talked about my frizzy hair. I talked about my split ends. All your ne- uniqueness. All my unique <laughs> issues, my, my need for shine that I don't have, all that stuff. And then they customize every product in your routine from shampoo to supplements. And pros ask some really interesting and unexpected questions like your zip code for climate. And when we spend time in LA, I can switch my formula to better reflect the climate that we're in. Interesting. I know. Because yeah, where you are definitely has an impact on Mm -hmm. your hair and your skin. So after pros analyzes your answers, they handpick clean, sustainably sourced ingredients to help you reach those hair goals. So they sent me shampoo, conditioner, a hair serum, And after using all those products, I feel like my hair is stronger and shinier and less frizzy. Pros is a carbon neutral certified B Corp. So they're an industry leader in clean and responsible beauty. All of their ingredients are sustainably sourced, ethically gathered and cruelty free. And they're also the first custom beauty brand to go carbon neutral. If you're not 100% positive, Pros is the best hair care you've ever tried. They will take the products back, no questions asked. Wow. Custom made-to-order hair care with pros is the key to achieving all your hair goals this year. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash junkyard. That's P-R-O-S-E dot com slash junkyard for your free in-depth hair consultation and 15% off. All right, Hannah, I'm still holding off, so (laughs) maybe you can take the the intro here. Okay, so we're going to tell you two stories that are kind of flirtatious flirtatious and romantic yeah from our early years in our relationship (laughs) when we were much more flirtatious apparently but i think it's easier to tell these stories that are really kind of cringy and embarrassing Mm -hmm. when it's years ago it feels detached i don't want to tell a story of something we did last week exactly that feels much more personal you know well that's i mean i think that's the nature of what we're we're always kind of conflicted about is like has enough time passed yeah that we feel comfortable sharing this ridiculous whatever that we've done yeah exactly and so now the time has come we're ready for and these it, two stories <laughs> exactly and in five years we'll tell the stories of things that are happening now so it'll just it'll progress that way uh which one do you want to start with shane let's start with the hot tub hot tub hot tub nightmare <laughs> this was our first time in a hot tub it was it was a jacuzzi actually it wasn't a hot tub we were on a road trip the part of this story is in my book strangers assume um, very briefly However, you've not heard Hannah's side of it. You've not heard the jewelry details. Yes. Um, we were in the middle of Indiana mm-hmm. on a road trip, our first road trip together. Yep. 
And not only were we in the middle of Indiana, but we were in a very, very, very small town yep. for the night. Like maybe eight people. Should there. we say the town, Shane? Uh, it's it's sh- in the book. Shipshawana. Shipshawana. Shipshawana, which is a fun name. Yeah. And we were staying at, I think it was called the Shipshawana Inn. That's what I think it was called. I, or it's probably the only inn yeah. in Shipshawana. <laughs> um, it's a cute, quaint, like, country hotel. And there was a hot tub or a jacuzzi in the hotel room that next was to the bed. That did. Remember was me? It? Like, I think so. I remember going in and being like, oh, there's a hot tub in the yeah. middle of the room. Because it was the first hotel room that I ever stayed in where there was a hot tub like right there yeah. in the room. Yeah. So whether we booked it on purpose or not, this was like the honeymoon yeah. suite where you're meant to be like romantic. Like, oh, uh-huh. let's get in the tub. Like, and you know. we were, okay, let's <coughs> just say we also had driven from Pennsylvania. This was our first stop. Right. That's a long drive. It's like nine hours. Nine or ten. And we didn't take the highway. No, Remember we, we got off. Batteries? Yeah, we wanted to. This was our first road trip. We were so excited. We were like, we're not taking the highway. We drove for like literally 12 hours because we took all these back roads from Pennsylvania to Shipshawana. And then when we arrived, we were like, let's get in the hot tub. One small detail before that, we didn't have any food yeah. because apparently every restaurant in Indiana closes at 7. I think it was it was like a random weekday. We couldn't believe it, but they literally all closed at 7. Yeah, I think I made that exact joke in my book now that I think about yeah. it. Uh, I'm no better than chat GPT. I'm just, <laughs> you know, recycling my unoriginal thoughts over and over again. Oh, my again. God. Um, but we got, like, microwave frozen lasagna and toaster strudels. From a grocery store that was, like, a not even a chain. It was a very small grocery store, and it was closing at, 7 p- at like, 7.30. So we, like, ran and grabbed them. Then, like, they melted on the way to the hotel, so we kind of microwaved them to a Ew. sufficient temperature. It was a wildly underwhelming meal my reason for saying it is like in this moment of just like pure excitement and joy of being together we were excited about this meal yeah we were like oh like tv dinner yeah. night <laughs> Ro- and, road trip meal <laughs> road trip meal and then we ate dinner got nice and full on uh Half cooked lasagna. Yep. And then we were like, "All right, time for that tub." That hot tub looks pretty good, <laughs> doesn't it? Like, I think that's the biggest <laughs> difference between us now and us then. Like, seven years into our relationship, at the end of a road trip day like that, there is nothing that is going to get us into that hot tub. No. You know, now we're like, time for bed. Now it is. I'm like, put HGTV on <laughs> and don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. But back then we were like, everything is amazing. Everything's together. Everything yeah. needs to be as close as humanly possible. Yep. Hannah, I'm getting in that hot tub. Are you joining me? Literally. Yes. Yep. So we turn the water on, as one does when you're filling a hot tub. Yep. And yet nice and full nice and steamy i don't love the Ew. hot tub in the room with the carpet concept no because it got real wet in there real fast <laughs> um so and then we just went to bed like <laughs> four feet away you know on the little moist sheets it's Ew. nasty but hannah has me this robe hannah puts me into the hot tub with my yellow pool float why on. why did we do that i don't know i think i Wanted to like float around. You wanted to swim. I honestly, I don't know if the initial idea may not have been for both of us. It might have been like, oh, I'll get in the hot tub. True. I might have been like, I don't know if I want to get and in the hot dr- tub. Yeah, because you're grossed out by like, like hot tub type in things. in public areas. Yeah, 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 a little bit. Anyway, I'm in the hot tub naked. It is hot. The water is yeah. so hot. <laughs> and uh, as, it's also July. <laughs> like, let's not pretend like this is a winter hot tub. This is July. But I'm chilling. <laughs> Hannah's just robing. And then Hannah gets in. Yeah. Okay. So then you can take your neck float off. Yeah. We found this position that worked really nicely with like Hannah kind of laying on the bottom of the hot tub and then me kind of like perched. You were laying on top of me. Uh, Yeah, like on you. Yeah. Yeah. And it was cute and adorable. It was so romantic. And sensual. Yeah. 
for about three seconds. <laughs> and then it wasn't. <laughs> and then we started to sweat. It, I don't know how hot I made that hot tub. Nothing like this has ever happened to me before. It must have been really hot. We started to get so hot. And we had just gotten in the hot tub. So at that point, we're like, we're not we getting out. out. Yeah, yeah, we're not getting out. That's- but I was like, hit up. My, okay. <laughs> this is literally less than five minutes in. And I tell Hannah, like, my forehead is sweating, yeah, and my whole body is tingling. Yeah, I'm getting. Is that a sickly. problem? Like, what's happening? Yeah, and you felt the same way. Yeah, so I was like, okay, I'll cool <laughs> off the water, and we'll take like, uh, we'll be in like a swimming pool temperature, uh, and then we can get out after we cool down. So I turn on the cold water, and it is ice, ice cold. cold. There, are- I, uh, oh, <laughs> I know. I'm having flashbacks yeah. <laughs> of joy right now because as the water is coming down. And you know, I see on our toes, and we're like, "Oh, Ooh. heavenly, heavenly!" We have the idea <laughs> that that water coming from that <laughs> faucet is probably delicious. <laughs> so, <laughs> he cups her palm and gets some of the ice cold water, brings it to my lips, yep, and I swallow it clean, <laughs> and it oh, it ices me like I am a popsicle. It feels. So good. I'm like, Hannah, do it. You have to do it. Uh huh. So Hannah gives her So I start doing. And you can't hold a lot of water in one hand. I've only got one hand. The other hand is holding Shane. So we start scooping this water to our lips for like 10 minutes. Ravenously. Ravenously. You know the scene in Harry Potter uh, where Harry is using the shell to give Dumbledore like the poison to get the Horcrux. It was exactly that, except if Dumbledore wanted, <laughs> like really wanted it. We were shoveling. That was such a specific. Like it was exactly that. That was the tiniest, like little shell bits of water onto my hand. We did that for like 10 minutes. I scooped a hundred handfuls yeah. of water to our lips and we would alternate. <laughs> and we had completely abandoned all intimacy. Like, <laughs> Whereas five minutes before we were like, it was intimate, know, physically <laughs> close and like whatever in the tub. Now we're like, water in our mouths is the only thing mm-hmm. that matters. <laughs> I'm like drooling because I can't really suckle it very well out of her hand. We're laughing hysterically. You're like, hurry, hurry, <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> it was, a, I mean, it ended up being a really fun experience. Yeah. But, and that water tasted better than anything I've had since. There was really very little intimacy. That went on, and that was kind of the point of the romantic hot tub. But yeah, ended up not being very romantic. It was like a near death experience, <laughs> and then complete hysteria and euphoria. <laughs> yeah, we were making a lot of noise, and I <laughs> do worry about what the other patrons in that hotel I know. may have heard. And it was Amish run, also. It was in Amish land, so they were probably extra <laughs> disturbed. <laughs> Very conservative area. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not one to hear. Give it to me. Give it to me. Put it in my mouth. Give faster, it more and more. Faster. Put it in my mouth. Put it in my mouth. <laughs> I need more. <laughs> oh, this is so hot. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so that is our first story. Uh, the next one is a bit more romantic. It doesn't it really get more ruined. Romantic, yeah. <laughs> doesn't get ruined, but looking back, maybe it should have. <laughs> so we were in Peddler's Village. This again. Which we've talked about before. <laughs> uh, you might notice the theme. We really enjoy Peddler's Village, Pennsylvania. We're going to go back there this summer. I'm calling it. I'm going to make it happen. If you're not familiar, well, Hannah. No, we don't need to do this you, again. Really, really fast. Shane, how many times have I said if you're not familiar with Peddler's there Village? There are new viewers here oh my wondering God. what Peddler's Village might be. And I'm so sorry to the old viewers <laughs> who have literally heard this spiel like 10 times. Peddler's Village is a very quaint very quiet, beautiful shopping district meant to look like old, Old you know, it is kind of like, it's an old area of Pennsylvania. Um, it's a beautiful area. It's in Bucks County. Anyway, it's a great shopping. Our viewers are going to discover someday in like 10 years Uh that Peddler's Village has been giving us like covertly, <laughs> like tens of millions of dollars. No, we have not been paid by Peddler's Village. We just love it. It's like my perfect place. Yeah. And Shane took me there very early on in our relationship, knowing I would love it. Sure enough, I loved it. And we just kept going back. So I'm obsessed with Peddler's Village. I love it. Yes. Okay, great. So cute little date weekend. Yeah, we at are, a beautiful inn. Right. We are in Peddler's Village and it's nighttime and we decide 
to take a stroll to get some ice cream. Aww. Great. We go in the ice cream shop. It's very tiny. Tiny. I'm telling you this for a reason. It's maybe 10 feet by 10 feet. Yeah. Like, you can reach your arms out and touch every yeah. wall. Uh, so, quiet and empty, except for one employee who is uh, working. And we go to the line. To get well, when you, line. Yeah, like, when you open the door, right. there's literally, like, four feet in front of you, and they have one of those rope barricades right in front of you when you walk in. So, you right. have, like, two feet, and then you have to, like, turn left go around the barricade and then, you know, go on the other side. It's just to keep like a line moving because during the day it's busy, like then it was empty, but right. it's so people have a direction to go. So, you know, go to the left and then you pay on the right, like that kind yeah. of a thing. So I've been driving my wheelchair my entire life since the age of two. I consider myself a very good driver. I'm very good at maneuvering. It's like saying you're a very spaces. good walker. Yeah, yeah. You're good at it. Right. I'm, I'm got it down pat. You don't bump into things. No. But <laughs> however, on this night... I, for whatever reason, could not maneuver around the barricade. So my back wheel went up over the base of the barricade. Which was Normally, metal. Normally, no big deal. Yeah. It shatters. <laughs> it shatters in the most deafening. It sounded like a gunshot. Fra- yeah, gunshot yeah. level volume in the store. <laughs> the uh, employee there almost like ducked behind the counter <laughs> when they thought something was happening. <laughs> I horrible. thought the roof was like coming, <laughs> collapsing in on me. Nope. Nope, just me <laughs> destroying their barricade. Sorry about that. I uh, did not mean oh to. My God. That's not the romantic part. It here. was really just one big crack. Uh-huh. You know, so it wasn't, it still held up for its purpose, but it was definitely uh, broken. So, mayhem us <laughs> get our ice cream. <laughs> we're here. And we're like, we're not going to eat inside <laughs> because we've just ruined their store. Uh, and there's like one go, table. Yeah. We would take up the whole area. So do you want to explain what we did instead? Okay. So we're like, bye. Thanks for the ice cream. Sorry we broke your barricade. We exit. <laughs> we're still, again, this is like even earlier than the road trip. This is like six months into dating. Uh-huh. We don't give a crap about anything. We all, are yeah, giddy. All we want is to be as like physically yeah. close as possible. Like the idea that I'm getting ice cream with Shane has me on top of the world. <laughs> so I have my ice cream. We walk out, we go to the right, we're walking down the path and there's a nice bench. So we're like 30 feet from the ice cream shop. We didn't go very far. And we're sitting right on the path on this cute little bench. There's you a- You have to describe how we're sitting. Oh, remember? I will. I will. Okay, yes. Okay. Oh, I remember. Okay. I'm there's not like, on her lap. Don't worry. There's a- <laughs> There's a little <laughs> creek behind us with one of those big like water mill things. Kind of a babbling brook. A babbling brook. It's beautiful. And it's it's dark, but there's some street lights. You're like, you know, walking path lights. It's right. beautiful. And so there's we sit, people milling about. Yeah, it's not you know. packed, but it's we're not the only people. There's people strolling the path, yeah. other guests from the inn. Other date nights occurring. Yeah, other date nights occurring. So we've got this bench. I sit down on the bench. Shane does not pull up next to me. No, no. I say spread him. He comes in straight forward, knocks his knees against the bench. I pull my legs up on either side of him, so I'm straddling him. You're like, straddling. You're like, your knees, you should show them if they're watching. Well, yeah, knees my knees are up. Your apart. knees are wide open. My legs are up. And I pull in into that space. So that we so, yeah. are just close. We are inches from one another. <laughs> so the poor people walking by, we're sitting there. We are just making out. It feels like this. Hannah takes a bite of her ice cream. I take a bite of mine. We kiss. <laughs> we pull back from the kiss. <laughs> listen to each other's eyes. Giggle. We kiss for 10 seconds. <laughs> we pull away. Have a little bit more ice cream. We kiss again. <laughs> over and over and oh over. Oh, my God. Completely numb to yep. the fact that, like, families are walking by. <laughs> oh and God. people are, like, you know... Her yep. mothers are walking by. Nope. No, and, and literally did not register in our minds at that time that what we were doing was like a pretty aggressive public display <laughs> of affection. It was so aggressive. But we're not giving each other pets on the lips. No. Either. We're like trying to get we're tasting the, ice the ice cream, cream. <laughs> out of each other's <laughs> mouths. Ew. Um, and... We're just yelling at it. And yep. it wasn't until I didn't like back in the hotel that night 
that we were like, oh my god, you know what? Was that weird? Everyone just saw us <laughs> doing that, and they had to be confused. Because <laughs> you know from watching our channel <laughs> that people don't ever assume yeah. Hannah is my partner. They think that, you know, I'm her son or yeah. her, her patient, whatever. So I can only imagine strangers from afar seeing us and being like, oh, like, look at that, like the nice boy and his mom. And then they get closer <laughs> and we are tongue deep. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, move along, kids. Yep. So anyway, oh. some little insight into our flirtier days. Uh-huh. And we're going to take a quick break right now. Wait, before oh. we do, I just want to say, I am so grateful that we didn't start our YouTube channel for two years. Oh, me too. Can you imagine uh -uh. if we had started it, like, for that trip? No. It would have been horrible. We didn't have a, we didn't have a filter. We no. were, like, you know, overwhelmed by the love yeah. that we felt and nothing else matter like decency nothing matter uh, being an adult other people uh, didn't matter it was i'm so beyond grateful that we did not have social media to yeah. use at that point nope so if you were one of the people who walked by and saw us <laughs> going at it that night in peddler's village you probably remember it hopefully you enjoyed it but if you didn't we're sorry, sorry. that one's on us <laughs> Next what? Know, ice cream? Ice cream. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break now. Yeah. And then we'll be back to talk a little bit more about flirting, flirtatious styles, Ooh. and how we can be better flirters even now, years later. Okay, I'm when, ready. When the spark <laughs> has all but died. <laughs> We'd now like to briefly thank the sponsor of this episode, EveryPlate. My biggest reason for loving EveryPlate so much is because they have finally created a solution to the age-old problem of what the heck is for dinner tonight. Oh, that question's so bad. Yes, each week they've got 25 delicious and affordable recipes for you to choose from, and you can customize your order with up to 22 sides, snacks, desserts, and more. So I'll be swapping out the steak for, let's see, a chocolate chip turkey. <laughs> Their meals are quick and easy to make, and they deliver pre-portioned ingredients right to your door, so you're only paying for what you need. Dinner ready in 30 minutes or less? Yes, please. There's a reason they're America's best value meal kit. Every plate is 25% cheaper than grocery shopping with no hidden fees, so you can count on great value week after week. And they're 50% cheaper than your average fast casual meal. With all this money that we're saving, I will finally have enough to commission that tasteful oil painting of myself to hang right above my mantle. That is not happening. Get started with Every Plate for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code junkyard149. Again, you can get started with every plate for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code junkyard149. Check it out. Now back to the show. And we are back. Ready, Shane, to talk about flirting? I feel like I'm a pretty good flirter. You do? Yeah. I agree. You're pretty cute. Okay. We're not going to do this here. Did you? Wait. Oh. You must... You did it hurt? Oh Lord. When you stubbed your tail on my wheel. <laughs> That's a good one. All right. So we're gonna talk about this CNBC article <laughs> that Shane found because he's apparently obsessed with CNBC. I don't think any you're laughing. I don't think anybody else thinks that it's funny that these came go, from CNBC. Go on CNBC. Ninety nine out of a hundred of the articles are like Dow Jones slips one percent. Uh-huh. And then suddenly, flirt. It's like how to flirt, how to manage your emotions. Flirting wow. is not just for single people, is like the name of this article, essentially. Yeah, that's what caught my eyes. I was like, oh, do Hannah and I flirt with each other enough? Yeah. We'll find out. We'll find out. Okay, so this says that a University of Kansas study found that there are five distinct flirting styles. Ooh. Okay. I wonder which we are. I wonder. Why don't we go through all of them and then we'll. Decide which we are, right? Yeah. 
Okay. All right. So first is physical flirting in which sexual desire is made evident. So that's like touching. That's like when I rub my toe on you. <laughs> this is not funny. Do not. Next is traditional flirting in which one person courts the other who takes a more passive role. So one person is like pursuing, I guess. This one feels the most problematic of the group. Well, yeah. I mean, it could be, but it's traditional, Shane. I mean, you say that one side is passive. It just <laughs> gives me the feeling that the other side is being too aggressive. I know. Like, it's unwanted. And I know that it's not always that way, but like, just, just what it brings to mind. Yeah. Okay, next is polite flirting in which good manners play a large role. What does that even mean? I guess like holding the door for someone. Oh. Although. But that might be courting, like traditional. That is traditional. I think traditional and polite probably. Yeah. Go hand in hand. And also I don't feel like, you know, like pulling someone's chair back or opening the door. It doesn't feel like flirting to me. I know. Well, it, it doesn't, doesn't have like to just be. well mannered. Like you do that for strangers. You're right. So. But it could also, but like if it's in a relationship, it, it could be. You don't think I'm flirting when I hold the door for you, Shane? No. I'm concerned now because I think that's like when I hold the door, <laughs> the main thing I'm conveying is like a sexual flirt. Yeah. Well, now that I know that, <laughs> you're in for a, f- a much more uh, yeah. sensible time. Next time I Every hold time the, door. You open the door, I'm going to be like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Because <laughs> I see you holding that door. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next is. Sincere flirting in which strong emotional connections are established. That just sounds like talking. It all <laughs> dead end to know someone. <laughs> it also feels like it juxtaposes insincere flirting. Yeah. Which I guess we're led to believe are all of the others. I'm very confused by this article so far. This is what you get when you get relationship advice from CNBC. Like, is there are there examples of these things coming up? No, I've been giving examples. I need examples from the University of Kansas. Well, they didn't put that into the chat GPT <sighs> prompt, so they were not given. All right. The last one is playful flirting in which being fun and silly are most important. All, All right. right. So if you're watching at home or listening at home, what flirt style are you and why? Yeah. This is kind of like a love language thing. It like is. what do you do? Like what is your partner's preferred and what is your preferred and are they the same? What? Okay. So... Let's think about early in our relationship when the flirting was hot and heavy uh-huh. coming at us from every angle. What style do you think I employed most often? Uh, I think probably playful in which being fun and silly are important. I think you were very playful. That's true. And bordering on nonsense at all. <laughs> what, what was the one about being serious? Um, sincere flirting. I also feel like I do that one. I just don't understand that one. I need an example. How is that not just like talking? It is talking. That's what it is. Oh, yes. We talked a lot. The way I understood it, though, is like um, having like deep conversations. It shouldn't be considered flirting. That doesn't sound like flirting to me. But it's as a way of like getting at vulnerability with someone. Yeah. You know, feeling comfortable enough to be like, let's talk about our biggest fears. Okay. Yeah, I mean, definitely we That's did that. Probably that one. I just didn't. I just didn't understand that one. So yeah, I think like a combination of sincere flirting sincere and, and playful. playful. Yeah. yeah. What do you think I did? I'm curious what you'll think because I think I know. Uh, what was the physical one? Yeah, physical. It was physical. Yeah. Because like we would be, you know, we would. I'm trying to think of an example, but uh, my grandmother came here. Um, <laughs> Like we would arrive somewhere that we were driving together and we would arrive and before we would get out of the car, you would like lean or you do like lean over yeah. and like nuzzle my neck with your face or like, I know, you know or like hold my arm. I was going to say, I feel like m- instead of me saying anything verbally, I tend to just like reach out and be like, <laughs> yeah, you know, more touchy. That's totally I think that's to a T. Yeah. Like, throw away these five stupid ones. You're <laughs> physical. I am verbal. Like, because I have to be. Yeah. But, like, you know, in bed at night, you'll huddle into me. Like, yeah. you're very much a physical. Yeah. Flirter. And you're more playful and and also serious. Yeah. Barely. But, okay, why does this matter? Okay. <sighs> does flirting matter? <laughs> yes. Here's why. 
Not surprisingly, flirting styles greatly impacted relationship success. Oh boy. Individuals who engaged in playful flirting and flirted for flirting's sake were less likely to have meaningful relationships, unlike people who engaged in sincere flirting or polite flirting. Okay, but I don't understand what these styles are. <laughs> What? I think the playful thing is more like you walk up to a stranger in a bar and do like a pickup line. You yeah, know? that's not what I meant though. I like know. you're just funny. You you mean that we would talk and we would be very silly together. Yeah. Just like having fun making each other laugh. Yeah. But you also did sincere, so that that's good at least. But like them saying polite flirting in which good manners play a role means you have a, a more a more meaningful relationship. Because you're polite? This is what the study found. I don't believe... University of Kansas, you need to look further. How many... I need to see the study. How many couples were looked at? I did a very surface level research. And what generation were they from? I, I didn't read the article. I, I, I copied down some notes. It's distressing to me. This is why I handed those a deep dive. I don't like seeing I, Shane's... No- yeah, why didn't you just send me this? I didn't. I don't like seeing Shane's notes. I, I didn't know this was the level Shane was going to go at. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I have a lot of questions. I'm so sorry, everyone. This is going to be really not satisfying because of Shane's lack of. I feel satisfied. I don't. See, this is how we <laughs> flirt today by just fighting, telling each other how wrong we are. Okay. Here we go. I'm still reading. Um, those who engaged in physical flirting were not only likely to have meaningful relationships, but they also were more likely to have sexual chemistry with their partners. That doesn't seem like the very mind. Mind boggling no, thing. It doesn't. If you're flirting physically, you're probably being physical more often. Wow. Okay. Great insight. This study. Okay. No matter what type of flirt you are, it's important to not allow flirting to fall by the wayside, especially if you were in a long term relationship. Ooh. This was the main reason I picked this. Yeah. Not because I thought we were going to be actually like finding any unique insights, but I was thinking about. How we used to flirt compared to how and how much we flirt now. Yeah. So let's see what they have to say about how we can maintain yeah. a healthy level of flirting. I think my problem is I just don't have a good definition of what flirting is. You know? Yeah. Like now we're not going to be like, what's your deepest fear? Because we've covered that. <laughs> so like, I, I just don't know what, what is the, what do they mean by flirting? Well, it's apparently every time you hold the door for me. Yeah, like, am I supposed to be like, hey, Shane? Like, it, that's, it's just... I think they tell us okay, what, okay. They, what they want yeah. us to be doing. The next thing is how to start flirting with your partner again. So, Hannah, this might actually be really helpful for you <laughs> since you don't seem to know what flirting is. Okay. <clears throat> Let your partner know you want them, Ooh. colon, Send some sexy texts during the day. Make it as sweet or as naughty as you want. Just remember to make your desire clear. I think that we do that. Not okay. as often as we used to. When we were long distance, yeah. every three hours we were sending a yeah. flirtatious text message. Yeah. Miss That's you, normal. honey. Thinking about you. Yeah. Miss your smile. Wish you were here. Wish you were here <laughs> in, in this hot tub with me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, today... It's a little different because like... And also we spend almost all of our, all of our time, time together. together. So if I were to text you right now, it'd be a little confusing. Just make sure your intentions are clear. All right. So clearly state what you want. I will clearly state it. Okay. I would... This is my example that I'm going to use. Uh-huh. It's 3 p.m. You're sitting in the living room. I'm in the bedroom. And I text okay. you. You are the most beautiful woman I've ever known. My intentions are... To remain married with you. <laughs> Sounds like something Chat GPT wrote for you. <laughs> okay, next. Treat each other like lovers, not roommates. After years of living together, it's easy to slip into a habit of wearing old sweatpants or even forgetting to shut the bathroom door. <laughs> I find this so offensive. This can really wreak havoc on your relationship. It's important to treat each other as lovers and not slip into a platonic roommate routine. Well, this is as awkward. As someone wearing sweatpants. Yep. Both of us are wearing We're sweatpants. both wearing sweatpants. And I think I wore the same pair yesterday. You did. Uh, we've done exactly the opposite of what they And we don't us. close the bathroom door. We don't close the bathroom door. There is very little privacy between us. This and is you know old-fashioned. I prefer it that way. I do, too. Imagine me not feeling comfortable enough to, to like, let you see me go to the bathroom. Exactly. And if that then 
I was like, oh, the bathroom door is open. Yeah. No intimacy tonight. The magic is you lost. Know, the magic is gone. I mean, we've dealt with this in varying ways, like with Terry giving. Yeah. You know, we have to be more physically intimate for certain aspects of my Terry giving. And people are always like, oh, but that must just ruin the sex Yeah, because life. they've read articles like this that say don't wear sweatpants or, oh, yeah. or go to the bathroom. Turns in front of your out partner. we're proof that you can be pretty close, no boundaries, yeah. and still have a really nice and lovely yeah. intimate life together. And it's also interesting to me because like I don't leave the bathroom door open in front of anyone else. You know, it's not like if I had, it's not like when my friends are over, I'm like, I'm going to leave the door open. And then when Shane's there, I'm like, close the door. It's my husband. It's good because if you did leave it open while they were over, they might think you're flirting with them. I know. That's true. (laughs) Okay. uh, Next one. Get ready for date night. Remember when you used to get butterflies before going on dates with your partner? Take some time for yourself and maybe even take a hot bath. Shane, I hate everything I, about this article. I know, I knew you would. Um, I would like us to imagine this scenario. I I really want our flirt life to be better. Oh, and so okay. I'm gonna follow their advice. Uh huh. Tonight, uh, when we have the idea to go out for a date night, uh huh, and we're not quite feeling the butterflies yet. It's four thirty. Our reservation is at five thirty. I'm going to say to you, Hannah. Draw me a bath. Run me a bath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I I never, like, even in the most hot and heavy first month of our relationship, I did not take a bath before our date. Like, that's just not. I I think, that, I mean, this is, I don't have this the. This feels like something Jane Eyre, like in Jane Eyre. Yeah, but I do. I think, and maybe I. Don't have the wisdom or the experience to properly comment on this yet, but the shifting of a relationship from like the early flirtatious, like yeah, really you know heavy flirt relationship infatuation, to, yeah, infatuation to the mellowing out of that into like complete comfort and regularity like yeah. the everyday life living together I don't think that's a bad thing I don't either like, I understand that there are relationships where people find themselves years down the road being like where did our romance go yeah. I feel nothing but it doesn't have to be that way I agree like the the daily life that we live together and the um, closeness and the lack of like constant Hey, you're really cute. Send like yeah. send me a picture of your beautiful smile. I mean, there's pros like, and cons. Like, there's totally times when I miss having that like obsession. You know, that like crazy feeling. But at the same time, like there are a lot of cons to that. I, like I we have say, yeah. much more balanced lives now. Like back then, I really regret how you know I had like tunnel vision for you, and so <laughs> now I have like a much more full existence uh, with like other stuff going on. And, you know, there's also just, yeah, like you said, that total comfort versus that, like, slight anxiety when you don't right. know someone. About, like, like, doing something wrong. Doing something or, wrong or, like, oh my God, is yeah. this going to last? Like, is is there something weird about him that I don't know yet? Like, right. how is he going to react to this? And, like, being on your best behavior so that, yep. you know, you don't get a weird oh, I cannot, feeling from me. Cannot agree more. <laughs> like, there, as you said, there is definitely something to be said for that, like, butterfly feeling. Yeah. But I would much rather have a romantic dinner with someone that knows me completely yeah. and I know completely. And yeah, like maybe the butterflies aren't there the way they used to be, but the comfort and the just like joy yeah. of like having a life partner yeah. is a better feeling. I agree. So CNBC, shove it. <laughs> uh, this might be the last time <laughs> we ever use one of your articles. Oh, wow. Unless you keep spitting out these bombs. Because <laughs> uh, they've been good lately. <laughs> All right, everyone. <sighs> That's Shut Your Mayhem. We hope you loved it. Yeah. And if you did, Hannah. Oh, leave us a five-star review, please, uh, wherever you're listening. or Subscribe. Yeah, subscribe to our YouTube, leave a comment, like the video, all of that stuff. Get a Shut Your Mayhem tattoo. Oh, that's a new one. Mm, flirt with someone you love. Yeah, why don't you, why don't you like, 
give us our our outro. Our outro now, Shane. Well, <laughs> everyone, please remember that it is a junkyard out there. We have a few hot tubs scattered about the rubbish. Rubbish. <laughs> That's not a word. Ruffage. Wait, rubbish. Rubbage. No, there's a word. Rub rubbish. <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I hope rubbish isn't inappropriate. Um, but anyway, there are a few hot tubs scattered about in our junkyard. Um, they are rusty. You've made that tetanus. Uh-huh. But isn't intimacy all about the thrill of danger? I'm so sorry for that outro, everyone. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>